Hey there folks and friends, Connecting Dots here. It's August 3rd, 2014. I'm sure by now many of you must have heard of the Ebola coming to the US. Watch out folks, holy jumping it's going to get you. I don't think so. Okay, so let's uh, let's uh, clean up the BS out here and clean up the fear mongering porn. You know, and I don't mean to pick specifically on Pink Safaret too, but she has the same problem as many others out here. They take the stories and they run with them and they make videos and they get thousands of views on their bullshit it and you know and it, of course like you know, I pointed out Miss Milky the clown and many others they get away with it because what they say it's up to the viewer to decide so I, I'm yeah so let's promote a lunch a, a bunch of bullshit and fear-mongering and let the viewer decide how great pink safaret and Miss Milky the clown and the, all the rest of you goofs oh man anyways I followed her links in her her video to see where they lead up Yes, sir, Bob, the Daily Sheeple. Oh, look, 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 look. Look who's on the side here, JM Bullion. Uh, many, I, 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 I've talked about this before here at realistnews.net, which is owned by YouTuber JSnip4. They, this is his sponsor, JM Bullion. They helped them build that website. And lo and behold, what did they do? They banned me from the website. Why? Because I was telling Americans that they could buy the Canadian silver maple leaf coins, which are 10 times more pure than any other coin in the world, any other government minted coin. It's the purest one and it's cheaper. Hello, folks. Yeah, they don't want that information. JM Bullion actually went to the point of deleting about four of my threads on this uh, purity of silver. Yeah, and in the end, they, uh, they banned me. So long story short, I've continued on here with the truth, and this video is going to wake up a lot of you because it all points back to who? Paul Watson. Who's Paul Watson? No, oh, you don't know Paul Watson, eh? Well, you go look at her other uh, link she leaves there, the common sense. And uh, is there any common sense here? Absolutely not. It's the same BS that's promoted on the other site, and it all goes back to Paul Watson. Who's Paul Watson? He's a writer for Infowars.com. Yeah, fear porn man, Alex Jones, the money bomb specialist. Scare the shit out of you. Take some truth, twist it, scare it, make it seem like it's coming to affect you now, and send him some money because he's going to protect you. Bullshit. This guy's done nothing absolutely nothing except promote stuff that's already out there and talked about regular small time youtubers the only problem is he's on on the corrupt side so yes the thumbnails will be promoted on the side of the youtube channels you will see alex jones dabu seven dutch sense miss milk the clown pink sapphire everyone that's on board of it all the same bs you know i hate to say it maca electric yeah, another one. Why do these people lie about me and ban me from leaving comments? Back when I could leave a comments on their video? I'll tell you why. Because I tell the truth. I'm not about the lie here. There is no citizen camps being built to throw you people in there. You go read the story. I'll leave, leave a link down below. Go read the story, okay? I, I personally joined the Committee to End Homelessness and the Coalition to End Homelessness in my hometown only to find out they're psy-opted. Yes, they're absolutely psyoped. They don't, they don't want to end homelessness. They don't want to talk about the banking. They don't want to talk about anything about that. What they want to do is get people to send money in so they could build these new homes for homeless people, which while they never own, they just keep renting and subsidize renting, basically. Uh, you know, And I was saying, well, if we're going to do that, at least let's allow them to take these welfare checks or whatever that's going to them, at least allow them to own part of these homes these you know they're going to be living there for the rest of their lives or on a disability why should they have to rent for the rest of their lives anyways i'm sorry I'm getting off track here but the point is that there's the notion of these people um, being forced in, into these detentions uh, is is a conspiracy absolute lie he can't find anything to back up this now i'm going to continue on here because this is all about the ebola outbreak and how you're all being lied to basically lie to. This is fear porn here. So have you, as you know here, if you're living in the U.S., especially you must have heard about they're, they're flying these aid workers to Atlanta, right? And someone said, well, there's no there's no police escort. Yes, there was a police escort. Okay, there's, there's a police escort there. If you zoom in close here, you can see the two white lights at the bottom. There was a police following this ambulance. Long story short, it still didn't make sense, and I'm glad that Mail Online, not that I read this uh, newspaper, but I was doing some research on it, and they talked about how while the guy was unsteady on his feet, and he's helped out of the ambulance and in a hazmat suit, and he walks. Notice they put it in big letters, walks into the hospital. What's up with that? Here's the video, folks. 
Here, here's the doctor who's coming out of this ambulance. Now pay attention here. This guy here is standing way back with, with his suit on. Why? Is he going to get infected? Like, what's the difference? But what's the best is take a look in the back in front of this. Uh, take a look in front here. You'll see there's a police officer. Now notice here, he got out there weakly. Now he's holding his hands. So he's like, he's weak, right? Look, we're going to lead you into the hospital. How come there's no stretcher? How come there's not even a wheelchair out there? Really? He's that weak? And then look at, look at, there's a police officer in the background. He's got nothing on. He's got nothing on. These guys got protective suits, and this one's even standing back from them to make it look like, it, you know. And there's a regular service industry trucks that are at the hospital, obviously doing some kind of repair of some sort on something. But, you know, we're made... We're made to believe that this is, watch out folks, it's coming to get you. Anyways, I don't like the fear of porn. And um, those of you who are wondering how he got here, was he uh, all contained in the, you know, in the air flight by himself? No, was it, this is their CDC airplane. He was laying down on a stretcher. You can see there's somebody sitting there beside him. Now, if Ebola is really that dangerous and we're all going to get, you know, it's all going to infect us and we're all going to die, then why didn't it kill everyone at least in Africa back in 2006, because here in this story here, this study said that there was over 5,000 of these gorillas that had died because of an Ebola virus in Central Africa. So there's an outbreak there. It kills 5,000 gorillas in 2006, but that's the end of it. And you'll find out here that there's been other Ebola virus outbreaks. I got a list of them here, but I got to stick on, I got to stick with the common sense here and let you all know that you're not really at risk. The chances of you getting Ebola are very 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 minute it's sad that these people are spreading bullshit but this i wanted to show this graph here to let you know that this is how it spreads and after these people have eaten either been bitten by a bat which is very rarely they mostly get it from uh, from contaminated meats uh, that have been bitten by the bat and then they um, you know change body fluids uh, intercourse also is another way of spreading it so unless you're you're living in that area spreading touching these people and having intercourse with somebody who may have been eaten any of these infected meat chances are you're not going to get it okay so as far as it being in US yes back in 1990 here they they imported these crab eating macaw monkeys and they turned out well they they were infected with Ebola virus that that was in Fort Derrick Maryland now, I got some more stories on this. As you can see here, the outbreak, well, the first one that we know of here uh, was 151 deaths back in 1976. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but it was rather I just want to let you know that this has been going on for a long time. This is not new. Uh, the only thing I found in this story, there are already up to 126 deaths. I went and checked today. It was only 720. But I've talked about uh, Wikipedia. you got to be very careful because it's not it's a crowdsource information. So um, you got to really double check, of it, check it sometimes. Now, the interesting stuff was back in 2004, we had a Russian, Russian scientist who died of Ebola. After injecting herself, yes, a needle laced with Ebola, uh, with the deadly virus, and she punctured herself, I guess. But what's really interesting, that this was all taking place in a biological weapons lab. Yes, a weapons lab. Do they have a cure? Absolutely. And I guess since they're going to be working on these Ebola weapons to take out the population... Well, they better protect themselves. So, of course, they came up with uh, uh, their own little uh, remedy, right? This is in 2010. It talks about, uh, I'll scroll down here, and all the everything that you see in my videos is all linked down below. So if you want to go read up the story itself, it's all linked down below. Or you could hit the uh, space bar and not pause the video and hit it again to unspace it. But basically, it says that the Ebola shot that they've invented only works if it's administered within 30 minutes interesting so therefore it's impractical for the civilian population fabulous is not what they just wanted come on first 30 minutes or you're not going to be saved come on folks anyways you know i've been doing this uh youtube thing here for free i've been doing it since 2008 uh, before that, I started on uh, multiple blogs uh, telling people that the 2012 thing was a bunch of bullshit. It was fear-mongering again, more fear porn. I told them it's actually the beginning of the world's largest depression, the collapse, the the, uh, the rising of the New World Order. Anyways, long story short, I was talking about silver way back then. I was telling folks to buy gold at $800 an ounce, silver at $12, $15 an ounce. I'm going to link, leave a link to this story 
I really think you should go out and read it because if you're new to the whole colloidal silver thing, this is a great article that really brings out a lot of information if you're new to it. Now, I just want to scroll down here and he talks about how many of you were using tap water and adding small amounts of table salt to make this solution, this colloidal silver. Uh, I've talked about using distilled water. This is what I use, what I've used in the past. This is what I consider you, uh, this is what I think you should do also. And he also talks about heating the water, distilled water, okay, near boiling point. I don't bring it near boiling point, but I do heat it up. Now, moving along here, because I'm going to be concentrating on the cure. You've been f scared enough. Now it's enough, it's enough of that. Now it's time for some truth here so you can spread this information. Because what happens is if you listen to the Alex Jones and all that crap, you're going to go back to your family spreading the bullshit and you're going to look like a nutcase because there was no outbreak of Ebola. You listen to the wrong YouTubers and they scared the crap out of you. I hate to say it, but this is what happens here. Now, going along here, moving along, I should say, this story here talks about when a former CIO, uh, CIA microbiologist by the name of Larry Wayne Harris was asked on national television whether there were any natural substances that could protect the population against anthrax and other germ, germ warfare agents. He responded, the only natural substance I know of that is effective against these microbes is colloidal silver. I tested that myself when I was in with the CIA and I found it effective against both anthrax and the bubonic plague. And it says right there down below, he says, after leaving the CIA, microbiologist Larry Harris is said to have retested colloidal silver against anthrax in his private laboratory in 1997 and again found it to be highly effective. Now, that's interesting because and again, I'm going to leave a link to this if you want to read it, and I think I suggest you do if you're new to this whole colloidal silver thing here. I've been talking about this for a long time. Now, the whole hot zone, uh, sorry, the, the book called The Hot Zone, written by uh, uh, Richard Preston, talks about how the U.S. Army had stopped a deadly Ebola outbreak at the research facility using formaldehyde gas. So there's not a cure, but at least they can stop it if it's located in a specific area. Now, it's also interesting because colloidal silver also kills not Ebola, because it hasn't been tested yet, but it kills the Bacillus subtilis, which is what they inoculated the whole facility with, and then they pumped formaldehyde gas in the facility for three days. They tested for signs of life of Bacillus subtilis and found none, and therefore they concluded that the deadly Ebola was gone too, and it was gone. Now, what's interesting about that is that uh, testing on um, colloidal silver against Baxilla subtilis showed that it was taken out, folks. And it's one of the videos I pumped up just recently on my YouTube channel, which I'll get at the end here, where there's studies that show that they've tested against multitude of uh, dangerous, um, you know, infections, diseases, uh, d um, you name it. I got the, the videos there at the end here, folks. I just got to continue on with this. Sorry, I don't mean to get off track, but, you know, even NASA here, and I've talked about how NASA, uh, when they, the astronauts begin their space uh, training, they have to drink colloidal silver so they don't get sick. They don't stop drinking until they're finished their mission and they've landed back on space. This story here talks about how they even started to use silver to, to, to protect, protect the, um, clean water. Um, I'm going to leave a link down below. You can go read it. I got to move along here. Same with this one here. I'm going to leave a link down below. I'm, you know, I can't even, I'm censored by YouTube. I can't even leave comments and I can't upload more than 15 minutes. So you'll have to, I'm sorry, uh, this is all I can offer you right now. But like I said, the links are all, all down below. So you, you do your own research on this stuff instead of going back to your family members and telling you, oh my God, it's the end of the world. The Ebola is here. And da, 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 da. Absolute bullshit. So I'm showing this article here because I have a friend of mine um, back in 2000, 2010, I think it was, or 2011. Long story short, I've been talking to him about silver and uh, colloidal silver, yada, yada, yada. He happens to work in one of the in the kitchen, one of these homeless places. He goes in in the morning, gets their, their breakfast and their uh, coffee going in for them. And Anyways, long story short, he ended up burning himself really bad, got a bad blood, inf a bad infection. They gave him antibiotics, wasn't working. Three weeks later, the doctor says, I don't know what to do, but this is the last thing we have to offer you. If this doesn't cure it, I don't know what else we're, we're going to do. This is for bad burn, burn victims. Uh, this is what we use it for, so hopefully to work on you. And of course, it did. My friend's doing fine. They also use colloidal silver on horses. I know that from the uh, working on the farm for years. Now, as I said, there's historical proof that silver is effective, but they don't want you to know it. So you'll have to go follow the links if you want to get informed. 
Okay, everything's there. There's no doubt about it here that they use this stuff. I talked about how the army even puts it in their underwear and their t-shirts and whatnot uh, to protect the soldiers. And they found that if, if a soldier was killed or shot with a bullet, he wouldn't get infected because of the material in there. So connecting dots two, connecting dots three. That's my YouTube channel. I got to end here. This is past 15 minutes. Ciao.